So you have a very cartoony scene now, but you wanted to have just a little bit of extra cartoon punch. Well, you're in luck, because with one simple post-processing shader, we can make things look even more cartoony by adding these outlines to everything. We'll have a number of parameters to work with. We've got a distance mask, so if you only want outlines up to a certain distance, that is entirely possible. We've got a line bias. We've got a darkness value, so if you want it to be really dark, almost black, we can do that. But if you just want it to be a lot more subtle, that is also entirely a possibility. Matter of fact, we can even make them lighter than the surroundings, if you, for whatever reason, would want that. We've got a line thickness, which you probably want to be relatively careful with. And then we've also got some lines based on the normals, but if you're following on my last tutorial about cell shading, normals actually don't factor into this at all. So, let's get into making this! So, as always, let's start off by making a new material and calling it a line shader post-processing. I'm going to put the line shader into my post-processing volume so that I can just look back into our map here to see what it looks like in practice, because in the material preview it's not going to be great. And in the material, we'll set the material domain to being post-processing, obviously, then scrolling down here to blendable location, we'll set it to before translucency. Now, we're going to start with a scene texture, because of course we are, and we're going to set that scene texture to being scene depth. This will return the depth between the camera and the object that pixel is displaying. First and foremost, we're going to add a scalar parameter here, and that's going to be our line thickness. Let's set that to a default value of 2 for the time being. And we're going to then multiply that. We're going to multiply it by a vector 2. So holding down the 2 key on your keyboard and clicking. That will get us a vector 2 parameter. And we'll put in the R value here, we'll put 1. So this will be 1, 0. That's going to be what we multiply the line thickness by. Then of that multiplication, we're actually going to multiply again by the scene texture depth with the inv size output. That then gets added together with a texture coordinate node. We copy the scene texture depth and this is going to go into the UVs of our scene depth. So this all is just to calculate the offset in UVs. Then from the color output here, we'll get a component mask and we'll mask out only the red channel. So in short, what this does is it'll take the scene texture, which is just every single pixel rendered into a 2D texture, and it will check the scene depth, so how far away an object is from the camera, compared to the pixel one to the right. In this case, since we multiply it by a line thickness of two, it'll check two to the right, so we have a little bit more of a thicker line. So naturally, we need to do this for checking to the left, to the up, and to the down as well. So luckily, we can just copy and paste this whole deal three more times, and change these parameters around to being R minus one, then these other two are going to be R zero and G one, and R being zero and G minus one. Hook up the line thickness into all the multiply nodes, of course. But you'll notice that our output is still entirely white. And that is because we need to do a little bit of subtraction. Because what we have right now is all, all going over the value of one, which is pure white. So we're going to subtract the so we're going to subtract the original scene depth value from this output. So we'll drag off this and say subtract. And we'll just copy this set over here. And that will go into the A, while the whole calculation we just did goes into the B value. So let's copy that over again three more times. Put all the outputs from our node setups into the B. And link all these up into the A points. Now, we want to combine all of these things uh, together, of course. So we can just add all of these together with simple addition nodes and then add those two answers together again to all consolidate them into one single output. Now, when we put this into the emissive color, we finally have a line mask. So you can see we have lines here, but this is way too sensitive, right? Every single geometry bit here is being highlighted as well as things being relatively glowy. So now we'll need to do two more things. 
and it's a little complicated to explain these individually, so I'm going to add them both together and then we're going to go over them. So first we're going to multiply, and then the answer coming out of that goes into a power node, which will then obviously go into the emissive column. For both of these we'll need the scalar parameters, uh, which is going to be the line multiplier and the line bias. Plug these two both into there, uh, don't make them with default values of zero, obviously. And then the output from that is actually going to go into a clamping node so that we get rid of all that uh, shimmering and, and glowiness. Because, again, remember, this is literally just the mask we're making, so we want this to be very clean. Now, if we go back into the hub world, we'll see we still have a lot of harsh lines and a lot of, like, the geometry lines. Uh, but things are looking a little bit better already. So if we go into the material instance that I quickly made uh, here for this material, We'll see that by using a combination of lowering the line multiplier and increasing the line bias, we can get rid of a lot of these extra lines until we're somewhat happy with the result we have. So it's a little bit of a balancing act here. So let's try to keep the line bias somewhere around this range and then the line multiplier can be pretty low really. And that results in this as our line mask now, which is much much better than the absolute mess we had before. Now, all of this is just to make the mask. Of course, now we need to use this mask to combine our normal scene together with our outlines. So we'll want to get a scene texture and the scene texture ID is going to be set to post processing input zero. That's just the output render from the engine. We'll put that into a lerp node with a component mask for R, G, and B. So we want three values, we don't want a, a A value as well. That'll go into the top value here. We'll use the output from our clamp node as the alpha. And then you can simply use a vector three as the B value here, and that'll make your lines just always be black. That's the easiest way to do things. As you can see now, everything has black lines around them. What I personally like to do is copying over this post processing uh, input zero node and adding a divide, then adding a scalar parameter and call it a line darkness, putting that into the divide and by default that should be a value of one. Also put that into an RGB mask then plugging that into the loop, now we suddenly have a situation where we have this parameter where we can increase this to make the lines on our render darker and darker until they're, again, just black. But if we want to have a little bit more of a subtle effect, we can just lower this value until it's just a slightly darker version of the base color. And as you can see right here, for instance, the line is more dark green than it really is black at this point. And that just makes the outlines feel a little bit softer on the eyes. It's a little bit less harsh. Then for the very last step here, it's optional, but it's nice to have. We want a depth fade. Uh, we'll hold down one and left click for a parameter. We'll set it to one, put that into the opacity. And then the fade distance is going to be a scalar parameter yet again. Uh, and we'll call that just distance. Putting that into the fade distance here. We'll put this into a rounding node so that it always rounds up to one or down to zero. So we don't have any weird gradients. You either have an outline on a pixel or you don't. There's no in between. And that then again goes into a loop. This will be the alpha. We'll use the output here from the RGB uh, for the scene colors as the B. And then the actual composites will be the A value. Putting that into the emissive color will be our finished post processing material. So now we can see the distance is set to zero, so there's no lines at all. But once I start increasing this value over here, you will see slowly but surely we start getting lines further and further away from the camera. This value gets very high very quickly, so you could always just like do a multiplication here so that this value doesn't get as ridiculously high. Makes it a little bit more difficult to get accurate results with it, but that doesn't really matter all that much. 
And when you combine this with the toon shader that we made in a previous video, you get a very nice cartoony cell shaded look. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as well as the last one, if you've seen that one. And this is altogether how you make a nice cartoony looking area for your game.